Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to our final episode in our solo playthrough of Assault Games Sicily 43. In episode four, our previous episode, the US forces held on to the objectives and battered the German forces to the point of withdrawal. The lone hope for the Germans is Tiger Tank. Up to now, it's been rather ineffective, but with some deadly shooting by the Tiger Tank, the Germans might have a chance. Let's see if the US can hang on for victory or the Germans can pull victory out of the jaws of defeat. Before we start in, let's do a quick recap of our actions so far. The U.S. forces here on the right have, ca have held on to their original objective and captured the main objective. Germans hold their original objective here. However, the U.S. forces have extracted heavy casualties on the Germans, knocking out a Panzer III J tank, the German anti-tank gun, and an infantry squad. Meaning that if the Germans sustain just a few more casualties, they might be forced to withdraw. So all the U.S. have to do is to hold on to the status quo to win this battle. From the German perspective, they have to move. If they're gonna win, they either have to knock off enough US forces to force them with, to withdraw or retake this objective. Their problem is they don't have much punch left. They've only really got this Tiger III tank, which to be fair, should have been more effective in the battle than it has been to date. It hasn't shot well. And if this Tiger III tank could finally get its mojo going, perhaps taking out this Stuart and Sherman tank then the battle could tip in the German favor. However, if the US in the meantime perhaps knock out one more German unit, the German forces might withdraw, which means this could be a very short episode. The first mortar round has the potential to knock out a unit, which might lead the Germans to conceding the battle. So this might last three turns, it might last one turn, a lot of things up in the air. Let's jump in and get started. As always, we'll start with the initiative roll. Germans are rolling the red die. US has the initiative. So we're gonna go right into the planning phase right now. Now, due to unit casualties, the Germans only have four commands left in this turn. The US have lost two units, so they've gone down to eight, down to six commands. The Germans started with seven, have lost three units, they're down to four commands. So these turns are gonna get more concise and more compact as, units, as, as both sides have suffered casualties. So I'm gonna assign those. I'll make a point of mentioning those if they come up in the course of, of, of impacting battle at all. But other than that, we're going to start right into the support phase with the U.S. firing its mortar indirectly, which happens during this support phase. We're going to jump right in here and have the mortar fire indirectly on this rifle squad. It's the least protected squad and it has just moved up. The mortar will have to spot them. We'll calculate the attack and see if the U.S. can get off on a strong footing here. Mortar team did fail to spot the rifle squad accurately, so that's going to give the rifle squad a little bit of an advantage, but they do lose their weakest die because it's an indirect fire attack. U.S. mortars open fire. Ooh, not too bad. Critical hit, hit, and, and suppression here. Let's see what happens with the German rifle squad. They suppress the hit two hits. So if we eliminate these out, what's left for the rifle squad is the critical hit that comes down on them. The two hits negate the hit and the suppression, but it can't negate the critical hit. So the rifle squad takes casualties and will have to roll for the critical hit as well. Green against blue, the attacker rolling green. It is a hit result. No damage points are applied. The infantry artillery unit is suppressed. So that takes this rifle squad out of the turn here and puts them under suppression. An unfortunate start to the Germans, a pretty good start for the US forces here. Now the US won the initiative roll, so it is their turn to act first as well in the actions phase. Now as we come into the US operations phase, they get to act first. And I think the US quickest path to victory is to knock out this rifle squad. That would force the Germans into a withdrawal condition where there is a 50% chance that they concede the battlefield. So we want to try to concentrate and wipe this out if we can. Originally I was thinking to have the Stuart fire, but I think we're going to actually have these two infantry squads, this one with the lead squad, firing as joint fire on this rifle squad to see if they can damage it. So we'll figure out this attack and then put it together. So we have a red and blue die from the main squad here, a red die that only the strongest result will count on from the secondary squad. The Germans have two yellows and a green because they're suppressed here. Let's start firing. The Ranger squad opens fire. Oof, gets two hits. That's pretty good. Second squad opens fire, gets a hit. So we have three hits here from the Rangers onto the rifle squad. This could potentially, oh. Rifle Squad only negates one of the three hits, which means that two hits get through. So the Rifle Squad, still suppressed, suffers casualties that brings it down to half strength, and it takes an additional hit. There's only one strength point left on this unit. The Germans hanging on 
by, the, by their toenails here in this battlefield. If you look at the rifle squad here to assess the casualties, they are a value of six at half strength. The rifle squad's at a three. So three more points, one, two, three, takes them literally to the brink of going up to the next pressure level. They can sustain no more casualties. Let's go now to the German operation phase. Up until now, this Tiger tank, which has a, a rather deadly 88 millimeter gun on it, has had rather ineffective fire, missing its shots, doing a little bit of damage, but overall it's very much underperformed its ability throughout this battle. This I think is the only path. I, one of the thoughts I calculated was having this Tiger tank rush, literally try to storm the building itself by moving forward, but there's not enough time left in the battle to do that. So I think the only path for the Tiger tank is to try to knock out both the Stuart and the Sherman. So to start out, we're gonna have the Tiger tank fire at the Stuart tank to see if it can put on a big hit. This is quite a powerful attack here for the Germans. Lots of dice against not as many dice and some strong dice here. So the Tiger tank so far has shot terribly. Let's see if it can change history here. Oh, that's a pretty good attack. This one's closer to the hit. We've got a bunch of hits with one critical hit. Slight technical difficulties there. Now we roll for the Stuart. Let's see what they can do. Oh, it's not going to be enough. Damage incurred, I think, here. We've got, so it cancels out the critical hit and the hit and the hit and the Stuart. That's a perfect match. Leaving us two hits, which puts some damage on the Stuart. Now, it's, it's not enough really to change the outcome. It gets the Tiger started. It needs more damage. It's somewhat promising, better than before, but US casualties uh, start to mount up as well. Stuart tank is worth 12 points at half damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six more points onto the US press pressure track. Still, they have to come up through this and then all the way through again to get to withdrawal stage. Tiger tank starts the process, but it's looking like the Germans might give in first. To the US phase we go, and this is the shot. Sherman tank assisted by the Ranger squad here, taking a joint fire action against this rifle squad. If they can put a hit on it, they knock it out, and that would force the Germans into a potential withdrawal situation, giving the US forces the victory. Here is our attack, red, blue, blue for the Sherman tank. The US did spot the unit. We used the tank to spot, and it did make the spot. It picked out the unit. We get a red die added by the Ranger squad, but only count the highest result against yellow, yellow, blue here. Uh, th this is this is a pretty good shot. We'll see how the U.S. can do. We'll fire the Sherman's tank here first. Three hits for the Sherman tank. That's looking promising. Rifle squ Ranger Squad fires two. They get an additional one hit because only one of those counts. So we'll note that the Rangers, the Rifle Squad here, needs to defend. They have to get four hits to stay alive. They do. They hang in there. They take four hits worth of damage. Oh wait. No, yes, we got four hits, right, because the red one's only one. So they just hang on. U.S. fire can't rouse them out. We go to the German action now. German forces hanging on. They've got three actions left. One of the other actions that people talked about having the Germans try to do here is having these forces take this other objective here. I, this is a huge long shot. I'm not even sure there's enough time to get there and do it. There is actually just barely but we're gonna give it a try. We're gonna have this rifle squad give up their hidden status, do a fast action, and move up here one, two, three. Now, right about now, we should see the US start to do some opportunity fire. We zoom out now, however. We're gonna have this ranger squad try to uh, react to that. It's a perfectly open line of sight. They can do uh, reaction fire and catch this unit moving in the open. So we're gonna have the ranger squad react to that do op opportunity fire, reaction fire here to try to put some damage on this squad racing across the open here. Here's our attack, just relatively few dice. The Rangers have a red and a blue die. The Germans only have the yellow and actually they should lose that because they're doing a fast action, but you always retain at least one die. US Ranger squad opens fire. Ooh, that's going to create problems for the, the squad here. Just throw a suppression and a hit on that red die and they get a suppression. So they are both suppressed and hit. So that stops them in their tracks, not that they were going any farther this turn, but that will stop them in the tracks and put a suppression marker on them. So we've marked them as hit and suppressed. They've taken casualties, but they still have the potential to move forward here. So both the US and the Germans have two actions left. That was opportunity fire for the US, so they get to act now. I'm a little actually concerned about this unit being able to take this 
Uh, Spot up, we just got a machine gun team, a sniper, and a mortar up here. Uh, so this actually could get interesting very quickly if we don't put some damage on this. So along those lines, we're gonna have the machine gun here try to open fire on this rifle squad. A lot of dice in this one. We're actually going to add in the sniper as joint fire, which adds a yellow die, but it's degraded to blue because it's firing across obstructed terrain. Uh, we're gonna lose the green die because of the fast action, although it gained it because of being suppressed. So a decent attack here for the US for the machine gun and the sniper opening fire on the rifle squad. Let's see if they can get some damage in here. Oh, what a terrible shot, only one hit. So very ineffective shot by the machine gun, machine gun and the sniper. The Germans block that just barely, but they do block it. Okay, very interesting. That leaves the US with one action, the Germans with two actions. Continuing with the theme of racing to the east, we're gonna have the tank hunters, which have a movement of two, do a fast action move, three up here. And there is no uh, reaction fire from the US here for the moment anyway. So we will give that action up. Each side has one action left. We go to the US and they have their Stuart tank left. We are, the, the question for the Stuart tank at this last action is do we wanna fire here or fire here. This is a better shot, but this has the potential with just one hit to end the battle. But I think this actually is somewhat of a threat now. So we're gonna have the Stuart tank fire up here and try to take out this infantry squad running across to gain the final objective here. Pretty good attack for the Stuart tank. Um, it is at half strength, however, so only the singular roll on a double die result will count. Uh, the Germans had a yellow and a green, but they lose their green because of the fast action. So the Stuart tank uh, it's gonna open fire here. Let's see if it can do some damage. So it gets a hit and a suppression because again, it doesn't count the double results. So one hit and one suppression. The rifle squad, which has done well so far, negates both of them with the two hits. This rifle squad rather determined here for the Germans, showing some hope here now. Germans have one action left. For the Germans, we are going to have this infantry squad advance down the path here and then into this crater this craters and trees here, uh, and they do a fast action to get there. And that is the last action. US, of course, have no more actions left, so they cannot respond. That brings us to the end of turn six. The Germans on the brink of potentially withdrawing. However, a rather interesting move here by the Germans heading towards the east in the final objective. As we head into turn eight, there's two things I realized. One is that these German units have just enough movement speed to get up here. They can go one, they can't do another fast action. They can't do two in a row. So it'll be one, two perhaps for the rifle squad, maybe one, two for the tank hunters, then one, two, three to enter the building on the next turn using a fast action and to start close combat to try to take it away from the sniper or whoever we might uh, try to get up into this house as the U.S. desperately panic. Now, the other thing I realized too is that if this squad takes another, if this squad is reduced to half strength, that could be enough to trigger that withdrawal, 50% withdrawal condition as well. So the US can really hit either of these two things. This is in the open, so we know we're gonna drop our mortars in this next round. But we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. Let's roll for initiative. Germans have the red die. The US get the initiative. That means they will get two shots at these units up here before we switch into that. So I'm gonna allocate, uh, as we start out here, I'll allocate the command points first. I'll do that off camera. I'll bring those up should they have an impact. Germans with four actions, US still with six for the moment at least, while this Stuart tank is still uh, in, in action. As usual, we're gonna start with the mortars and their target is right here. This is the obvious shot for the mortars to do. They will need, we'll probably use, oh, it's a tough spot though here too because they gotta look across the groves there. Uh, one of the things I just checked on this attack, the mortars have a range of three to 11 uh, Hex is here, so it's one, two, three, four. They are <laughs> close to being too close for the mortars to hit them. But uh, being caught out in the open when mortars are raining down is not a good idea. The German squad here has only a single yellow defense die. The mortars with two greens and a blue. And again, if the mortars take damage, we're gonna make this withdrawal roll. So this could end the battle, depending on what happens. The mortars open fire, two hits. Not the best shooting there. They could have hoped for better. Oh, the squad avoids damage unbelievably. Oh, that was such a lousy shot and great defense. So the mortar, you can imagine the rifle squad kind of jumping for cover as the mortars start raining in and they stand up and could resume their charge. That's a big painful miss for the US. God, I thought that could end it now, but the US do have the initiative 
in the operations phase. So they get to go again. The question is, what do we want to do? Zooming out here, the machine gun's going to have a chance to fire when they advance. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, so I want to have this Ranger squad open fire while we've got them in the open. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll calculate the attack. The Germans have very little defense here, so this could be a pretty good shot. It's a very straightforward attack. It's really the firepower of the U.S. forces against the inherent defense of the squad because there's really no terrain coming to play and either variables that often impact combat. So a pretty good shot, a red and a blue here for the U.S. firing on the rifle squad here. Oh, that's a pretty good hit. A hit and two suppressions. Would have liked to seen more damage out of that red die though. German rifle squad moves. Oh, they negate the hit. However, they are suppressed. So there's still, we just can't hit that last unit as the, the US here. So the German rifle squad takes cover this time, unable to advance. Now we go into the German phase here. See what they are going to do. So this, this rifle squad will not move. Coming up to our all important mini battle here, I want to get these tank hunters out of the open so they don't take any fire from other US units. Um, now I think the US are going to opportunity fire on them anyway, but they can only move two. They can't do a fast action move. We'll go one, two to right here. And we'll have the machine gun. I'm not going to have the sniper because actually I'm going to swap the sniper out with the bazooka team. We're going to have the, the machine gun open up here on them and try to take them down because they could make it here and the sniper isn't really team. We're gonna have a bazooka team, I think, come up and swap with the sniper here. So <laughs> yeah, it could come down to a bazooka team and a tank hunter team fighting it out for control for the last objective, but the machine gun opens fire. Things continue to go badly for the US here as they failed to make, they failed to spot the tank hunter. The only way this machine gun couldn't see them is if they rolled a one on their spotting roll and they missed it. Two yellow dice and a green die going against a yellow and three green dice. Hopefully this machine gun can dial them in from the US perspective, although they panicked last time and made a terrible shot. Oh, that's another garbage shot. A hit and a suppression, that's not gonna do it. That's not enough. This is gonna be pretty easy for them to defend, I think. Couldn't see them, they're firing blindly. Couldn't spot them. Yeah, no problems for the, the tank hunters. So again, the US ineffective in stopping what could be a last desperation charge here by the tank hunters. This is all going to come down to the wire. Okay, so uh, we go now to the German turn here. Tiger's gonna see if it can knock out the Stuart because this is another path to victory for the Germans here. If it can knock out the Stuart and then in the very last turn, knock out the Sherman with one shot, it would trigger the US withdrawal condition. So the Germans working on two angles here to try to win, both of them desperate, but this charge of the tank hunters to the north is showing some hope and promise. And down here, we've got another one that hasn't quite yet had hope extinguished yet. I'll calculate this attack. All right, here we go. Lots of dice against very few dice. The They get an automatic suppression again because of this Stuart's recruit level, putting up with a ton of firepower. Hopefully the Tiger can be as good as it was before. That's gonna be tough to contend with here. So five hits and two suppressions. Guys, a Stuart's really gonna have to take cover well here. Oh, it doesn't. It, it only negates three of the five hits, which means that the Stuart takes two hits. The first hit adds a damage point and the second hit destroys it. The Stuart is wiped out. The Tiger putting on the, 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 the firepower here, giving the Tiger a chance to force the US withdrawal, even if the North attack fails, if it can take out the Sherman in one shot, it would end the bat, it could put the US into the withdrawal condition. So the Tiger gains a kill here, the Stuart's knocked out, let's check at the scoreboard. The Stuart was, is a 12 points, it had already expended six because it was at half. So we go one, two, three, four, back to zero for five, and then six, the US pass another pressure point which puts them on par with the Germans. It's all even in terms of both sides deciding they've had enough. Going into the last couple turns here, it's much closer than I thought it was gonna be. We go to the US activation. Germans have two activations left. The US also have, oh, the US have three. We're gonna try to end it right here with this Ranger squad opening fire at the rifle squad up here, the, rem the remnants of this rifle squad. Now the US don't have enough commands really to do everything if we wanna switch that sniper out of the house. So it's either fire the Rangers or fire the Sherman. 
we're going to fire all the rangers. I think that's the better attack. So the ranger squad here opening up uh, at range of four, it's going to do joint fire with these other two ranger squads. I'll calculate the attack. So once again, the US need a one to spot the unit and they fail. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I feel like the, the, the combat gods here are conspiring against the US forces now, but they still have a pretty good attack. So we get uh, red and a blue. These are two half rolls, so they only take the highest of the two. Uh, yellow for the unit, yellow for the terrain, and then a green because the US missed their spotting. So let's get the US forces firing. Can the Rangers come through? Oh, that's a pretty good shot. Two hits and a third hit there. We'll take these two and only take the higher result of those. We get nothing on one and another hit on the other. So we'll put the hit up here like this. Four hits all together. Ooh, that's not the best attack though. Rangers, the, the German rifle squad. Oh, they do not survive. They stop three hits and a suppression, but that's not enough. The fourth hit gets through and eliminates this German squad. That puts them over the condition for a withdrawal, so we'll need to make that roll. Germans also lose an action token. That might be a moot point. Let's go see the scoreboard. So rifle squad is worth six. They were already down to half, so they take three more. One, two, three. Because they have gone across the border here, we trigger the withdraw condition. So just checking how this works now, the withdraw condition has to stay here until the end of the turn. So there, the battle still is going to rage on. Things can still change because this could change. It's not going to in this case, but it could potentially change. So uh, it's not done yet. We're going to finish this round. I think the one action worth taking for the Germans is to have this rifle squad here try to hit this machine gun. I don't think it's worth firing at anything to the south because it's not going to change the victory point conditions or be the factor that switches the US into withdraw mode. But this machine gun is going to get a shot at the tank hunters as it starts to approach the building and the next turn. And it's going to get a shot at them right in the open in order for them to make it there. So if we could, as the Germans, take this out of action or weaken it or put some kind of a, yeah, or put some hurts on it, it might help that final push. So with that in mind, this rifle squad here is going to open up here. Let's calculate the attack. Not the greatest shot here. It's uh, red and a green and it loses an attack die because it did a fast action. It's weakest eye, the blue that it had there. US, these are in heavy woods, which is uh, two yellows and a green, the inherent defense. And then the, the fact that it's shooting across the grove here means that the US machine gun squad here is in a pretty good defensive position. The uh, German squad opens fire. I'm going to re-roll that one. It's right in the middle. Oh, totally ineffective. We don't even have to roll for the US. So no effect there. We can take that off. And we, that is the last German action. The US have three, I want to say two actions left. I'll double check. Yeah, the US have uh, two actions left. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this sniper just move out. One hex with a normal movement. By nature, it's hidden. And then we're going to have this bazooka team move down the road into the building here. I gotta check the movement on that. Oh, actually, I am a dummy. I, the US do not have points to be able to move both units because I allocated a command point to the Sherman. So the bazooka, the, the sniper can move out, but the, the bazooka team can't move in. Do we leave it empty or do we leave the sniper in there and have units fire? I think we leave units in here and have them fire. So I'm going to undo that and change it. It seems to be the fairest way to resolve that. Yeah, so in the command points come into play here because I allocated a command point to the Sherman so we can't move it to the bazooka team. That's not very good. Okay, um, one obvious thing that we'll do, we will allocate that point to the sniper and have the sniper fire at the tank hunters here. So that seems to be a logical thing to do. Once again, the US need a one, I need a two or better to spot the unit and the sniper couldn't spot the tank hunters moving through the grove. They, they must be like stealth hunters. They twice they've had rolls of one. So three spotting rolls in this round where the US needed a two or better, they rolled three ones to fail on the spotting each time. So the sniper has two attack dice yellow at this range, but minus one because it did a fast action last turn or something um, to cause it to have that. Uh, so it's down to one yellow. The German gets the German tank hunters unit gets yellow, green, green. But when a sniper is attacking you, you lose your strongest. So a yellow against three green, not hopeless because a yellow is a pretty good die, but a 
hit. So that's, yeah, that's, I doubt that. I mean, three no results on the green. I don't think that's gonna happen. Oh, it hits. Okay, <laughs> so the sniper drills the tank hunters even though it couldn't really spot them. And they're only a two strength unit. So they take a hit and go down to one strength. That's, uh, that's interesting because that's gonna make their charge. It's literally like one guy against a sniper team <laughs> that could decide the whole battle here. That's hilarious. So that, let's check the victory points. I'm just gonna do it off camera. Tank hunters are worth four. So that's two more losses for the German. That's, Germans, that doesn't get them close to the next level. I just did that off camera. And the US get one more attack here. Now we have to use the Sherman. I think, honestly, this is not necessarily the hero's path forward, but with the US, if the US lose the Sherman, the Germans would trigger with the withdraw condition. I think it makes sense to get the Sherman out of here just to pull it away to, so it doesn't give the Germans that shot. And it's not really gonna have an effective shot against the Tiger. Although I feel like that's the chicken's path. Seriously? Nah, we're gonna, we're gonna have the German fire at the Tiger. We're, we're just gonna do it. I know it, logically it doesn't make sense, but we're not gonna have the Sherman run away. That's, that's not the right way to go. So the Sherman's opening fire. Sherman, two, two reds and a blue against uh, three reds, a green and a blue for the Tiger here. Sherman opens fire. Oof, three hits and a suppression. Not a bad shot here. I'd love to see some critical hits out of this though. Uh, I need to borrow one of these red dice. Oh yeah, plenty. So nothing, the shell grazes off the tiger and it just doesn't even flinch. That brings us to the end of turn eight. We're gonna do the organization phase and then we roll to see if there is a withdrawal. So we've come to the end of the organizational phase. I've cleaned up the board, setting us up for potentially a last turn, but because of the German casualties, we have to roll to see if they withdraw. It's a one six-sided die roll. On a one, two, or three, the battle is over. They concede the field and the last victory point, giving the US the victory in the battle. If they roll a four, five, or six. If we roll a four, five, or six, the battle rages on for its final turn. Here we go. The battle rages on for its final turn. <laughs> Here we go. Oh my goodness, it's just as coming down to the wire. Okay, so we're going to need to roll for initiative here. Let's see what happens. It's a draw, roll again. US has initiative, which does probably help here. So the, the only way the US can lose, the only way the US can lose is if they lose this victory position here. This lone tank hunter, his buddy's been killed, but he's still driving on. One man, one hero, one story coming for the objective here, not to be denied, or the Sherman gets wiped out, or the Germans get 11 points, but that's not gonna happen. They don't have the firepower to do that. So it's really gonna come down to the Tiger taking out the Sherman, or this lone individual taking the US victory objective here. Let's get started. In the support phase, we know what the US is gonna do. It's a range of three so that the mortar can just barely fire, but we're gonna have the mortar, that's the only thing that can reach the victory objective. We're gonna have the mortar try to take out this. And I think what I might do for this last turn, I'm gonna have the tiger take its shot to see if I can knock out the Sherman and see if the mortars, once these two threats are eradicated, I'm probably gonna call it because at that point, there won't be enough ways for the victory points to change too. So mortars are opening fire. Mortars have two greens and a blue. The tank hunters have a yellow for their squad and then two greens because of the grove. They do lose their weakest eye because of the mortar firing, uh, the indirect fire element here. Mortars open fire. This could eliminate one potential threat for the US. Oh, what a terrible shot. One single hit here. That's, I feel like the US have shot terribly in this last part of the, the battle here. That's gonna be easy for them. Yeah, they negate it just barely though. So the mortars, uh, don't work. However, the US get to, uh, and this unit, by the way, spotted for it and did make its spotting roll, but that does read movement and attack die here. So the US do get a chance to fire now. Up here, it makes sense to wait for the, the tank hunter unit to charge. We know it's gonna charge this position. So it makes sense for us to wait to get it in the open when it's moving rather than trying to hit it while it's concealed in the grove. So we're gonna wait here. That does mean that this rifle squad over here firing on the machine gun is a potential threat. So I think our best action is to open fire with the Rangers. 
Rangers here opening fire on the rifle squad up here. Really no modifiers on this. It's just firepower against inherent defense because they've got them in the open. There's nothing blocking the way. Red and a blue, the ranger squad opens fire. Ooh, critical and a hit. That's going to be tough for the rifle squad. They only get a suppression. Both things get through. So the rifle squad is hit twice to take it down to one hit point and we have a critical hit on it as well. Green against blue, no effect. The unit can actually still fire then, which it's at half strength, which weakens it. But and the Germans do get another three pressure points, taking them up to seven. I did that off camera. Now we go to the German action. Going back up here to our mini battle, this rifle squad, or the remnants of it, is going to try to open fire on the machine gun in here, see if they could perhaps get lucky and take them out of action. All right, <laughs> this is the best attack. They get a yellow, red, blue, and they, loot. they get only the single result on them here. They do get a critical and a hit, is what we call for, so those high results there. Critical and a hit, the U.S. machine gun, terrain, they failed their spotting role, the experience, all these kinds of things, the intervening groves, they get a boatload of dice here. They get, they get enough to stop it, of course. They, they get a critical and a hit on just one single die there. So uh, that doesn't work for the Germans. We go to the U.S. turn now. The U.S. have uh, four actions left. That does leave us enough, for, at least from a defensive position, to have this bazooka try a little bit of a crazy shot here, a move and fire up into the edge of this uh, field here, firing over into the grove. Another so, one of these long shots, the bazooka team, two blue dice at this range. It's really unlikely to do any damage here. They get a hit, but the Germans have a bucket load of um, defensive dice here, so it's not gonna do anything. Yeah, they block it. So kind of desperation moves here on the outside. I think it's time to, to bring in the heavy guns here, but we go to the German phase now. They have three actions left. Let's have the Tiger see if it can take out the Sherman. It would need an incredible shot to do so in one blast here, but let's see if it can do it. It's an interesting attack. It is outside of the, the Tiger's turret range, which is the 120 degrees along these lines. So it has to traverse its turret, which means uh, two things. One, it had to make a spotting roll, which it succeeded at. Second thing is that the... Uh, U.S. gain a blue defensive die, and the Tiger also has a slow turret, so it loses its weakest attacking die, which happens to be blue. So because it's firing out of range, it does make it a little bit of a less than uh, great attack here, but still, uh, two reds, two yellows, and an automatic suppression against the Sherman. The Tiger, with a chance for victory for the Germans here, opens fire. Oh, that's a terrible shot. One hit and two suppressions for a Tiger tank? Oh, man, that's... That the Sherman's got this. Well, it's, I mean, it's going to be three suppressions there, but it stops three hits. Um, so it stops two suppressions and a hit. It doesn't stop the suppression. So the, t the Sherman is suppressed, but the German uh, tank, the Tiger, needed much more to reach victory on that. So that is out. So while we're waiting for the last charge of the tank hunter soldier, it does make sense for the German squad here to fire at the machine gun to try to take them out as support for the tank hunter charge here. So we're gonna have these Rangers with one of the last three US actions, not four, open fire. Now I've since learned since the last episode that the rules have been changed and you can only do joint fire with two units. So I'm going to have this full squad and this half squad uh, this half squad open fire up here on this rifle squad. So the U.S. make their spotting roll. Uh, the joint fire, this will only count one result. Two yellows and a green against the green, against a red and a blue. We'll open the ranger squad to open fire. Pretty good shot. Hit in the suppression. We'll only count the higher result here. Ooh, critical hit. So a, crit a critical hit, two hits and a suppression. Ranger squad here could be in trouble. It stops four hits, which isn't quite, uh, it stops, look at that one there, stops four hits. So it's going to stop the, that's a critical, it stops all of these, but it doesn't stop the suppression, uh, the critical hit. So the rifle squad takes a critical hit, it drops down to half strength, and we have to calculate the critical hit now. I'm changing the victory point track. The US actually have the Germans back up to 10 losses on the track now, but we have to calculate the critical hit. This could suppress this unit, See what happens here? It is no result, hit against hit. So the rifle squad is down to half strength, but it can still fire here. Um, I'm going to actually 
take this shot off screen now because it's such a low percentage shot. So we're gonna have the German rifle squad fire on the machine gun here. I'm gonna do it off screen and if there is some kind of an amazing result, I'll pull it on. But it's, it's incredibly unlikely that the rifle squad has any successful fire here. Yeah, the rifle squad had absolutely no chance to hit anything. It was a really ineffective shot. The US are gonna pass for their turn. They have two activations left, two commands left. That means the Germans are gonna use their last command to activate our sole remaining tank hunter, making the last desperate charge for victory for the German forces. He's got to cross this open space and come in here for hand-to-hand -hand combat against the sniper team. See how this goes. So they're gonna move out here one, and this is where we're gonna have the machine gun open fire with uh, the uh, reaction fire. So it's gonna try to cut this guy down as he's coming across the open field. The sniper will join in. So we'll calculate this attack. I think it's, I mean, I have not done this before, but it feels unlikely <laughs> that the tank hunter is gonna survive this. I mean, you're charging a machine gun and a sniper trying to get to a house across an open field. This shouldn't work, right? It's a relatively straightforward attack here. The firepower, the machine gun's yellow, yellow, green at this range. Uh, and I, this again, interestingly enough, this is a unit I know the values have been upgraded to. It did uh, spot for the mortars earlier, so it loses its weakest attack die, giving it two yellows. The sniper has a yellow as well uh, in supporting fire. The tank hunter just has its inherent value. There's no other factors to increase its defense as it just charges across the field. We will fire the US forces here. They, I mean, it's. Three dice, right? So bad stuff could happen. Critical hit and a suppression. Okay, so it gives it three results, which means that the tank hunter, one of these results is gonna get through, right? It suppresses its stat, and so the critical hit and the hit get through, which eliminate the tank hunters. The last desperate charge of the German tank hunter is cut down by the sniper and the machine gun. That gives the U.S. two more victory points here, which just leaves them shy of another level of pressure. The U.S. do have one more action point, but I think we're going to say that is good. Here is a look at the final battle. The U.S. hold two victory positions. That charge with the Stuarts, both of which got eliminated, wiped out what was actually the key to getting up here with the rangers and holding on to it and putting the germans in kind of a tough position i do go back to force composition though being the the largest error i made with the germans the tank hunters really weren't helpful unless we're going to get in close i just had in my mind's eye it was going to come out a lot differently i thought the germans would have an easier time getting up and getting in range of the tanks but it just once the u.s got here Covering this ground for the Germans without smoke and machine guns um, was a little bit tricky. It didn't help that the Tiger couldn't hit a bloody thing. I mean, it had a couple of good shots, but considering all the shots it took, it just really uh, didn't, didn't perform well for the Germans. So U.S. victory, uh, a clean victory in this one. Uh, this was a lot of fun to play. Uh, one thing I did notice in the scenario rules that I missed was there is at, at turn five for the side that hadn't if had not gained this middle objective, um, the pressure increase should have increased by one. So the chances are the Germans would have had to go up into that um, routed zone because it would eventually got there. So chances are at some point based on that rule, the Germans would have left the battlefield before it got to turn nine. I just didn't see that rule um, in the scenario uh, outline there. I missed it. So that would have been a little bit of an impact on, probably a large impact on play actually, because the Germans would have had to make a second roll and a one to four would have uh, forced them to route much earlier than they did. So uh, that's a factor is to determine how it might play out differently if we had played it correctly kind of thing. But still, US victory in either case. Let's take a look at the casualties real quick. Here are our casualties, Germans with heavy casualties. I mean, they really pushed it at the end to try to take out that last victory position um, and that really cost them two half squads, uh, two rifle squads, the Panzer 3J, the anti-tank gun, and the tank hunters wiped out. Now again, uh, if this were the campaign game, you, you probably play this a lot differently. You probably, you know, you make that judgment and say, we're not gonna win, so you're gonna pull back because you don't want to lose too many units because those losses carry over to subsequent scenarios and things, creating all kinds of problems. So this was kind of that one scenario version of this game, but it's important to remember that that campaign game and that condition that we missed with the turn five increasing the pressure would actually force these units to not kind of act with that kind of desperation. But the U.S. did lose the Stu uh, one Stuart, both Stuarts, where's the other Stuart? Uh, I threw it away somewhere. They lost two Stuarts here and then two Ranger half squads as well as their anti-tank guns. So pretty heavy casualties in this one. 
And I think with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I learned a ton here with this one. This was a really enjoyable battle. Interesting to see, even as the Germans got stuck, they had some options. Although the last, uh, the heroics there at the end didn't work. This Tiger tank couldn't hit it. I mean, I feel like it could have been different. If the Tiger had taken even some decent shots a couple times, it prob probably could have forced the U.S. into a withdrawal condition by knocking out the Sherman, but uh, that was not to be. U.S. Uh, held on defiantly here for the victory. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to go right off into a short kind of impressions video. This one's going to be kind of long, so I'll link to it right here. I'm going to put it up, I think, hopefully within a day or two. Uh, just some, not really a full review, but just some general thoughts on the game and some of the things that I've noticed as I've been playing it uh, for, I think, over 10, 15 hours now or so altogether.